With the video pad in the startup show, it's never been easier to fire impressive lightning scenes immediately after the patch without any further programming. Just load your startup show, patch your fixtures, arrange the layout view and shoot the video. Finish. I continue at the end of my last video, so I've already programmed the sequences that are the basis of my video pad. In my macro pool, old macros creeped in. So if you are working with my startup show, you should delete all macros from 1000 upwards. At the beginning, I store a new macro on position 1000 and label it. At a cleanup of my show file after an event, all macros from 1000 will remaining in my start show. With the right click in the new macro, I can now enter in command. I want that this macro sends and go to command for the sequence color1 q1. Then I copy the macro seven times and label all the new macros for the respective colors. Of course, I also change the commands of every single macro so that he accesses the correct queue directly. I move to the layout pool and store a new view at position 50. After that, I assign my macros into this layout. I choose the setup mode and select all macros from left to right to align them. From left to right. I would like to assign an image to the macros. All necessary images are already included in my startup show. All images are also available for download. The link to this is in the commands direct below this video. And if you've been there, you directly can script this channel if you like. To provide the macros with an appealing graphic, I will right click into the corresponding macro. I switch the visualizing display to simple and save these settings as default. Behind image, I find the appropriate icons. How this graphic added to the image pool, I already have the script in the tutorial Media Player Inside Grandimate 2. After a test, I go back to the macros and repeat the process for color 2. As basis, I copy again the macro 1000. I label it Change the command in the command line so that the sequence list is now addressed for color 2. I copy the macro 7 times and change the label and commands for all 8 macros. Just like in the preview step, I assign the macros again in layout 50. Arrange them.
and assign the images. Next, the macros for the content. The starting point is again our macro 1000. Copy, label, change the command to sequence 106, 20 times duplicate, and customize all labels and commands. Adding these macros is the same way. Only with the assigning of the macros, I just have to make sure that I do everything correctly. Ideally, I just have to take in a few notes. I will abbreviate the creation of the macros for speed and rotation, as well as the integration into the video pad.
So far, the full thing should look like this. Next come the macro to set the fade times. So I save a new macro, label it, and enter a command. And that directly for four different fade times. When arranging the macros, I proceed as usual. In the previous tutorial, in the sequence for color 2, I saved the mode color preset within. If I want to turn this off again to get into the bitmap color mode, I need an extra macro. I store this macro under 1050. With the appropriate command to turn off the sequence color 2. Before we come to a very special button, I now add my logo in the same way. First, I have to load my logo into the image pool. How to do this, you have seen in the tutorial Media Player inside Granime 2. I just have to know that in my Back to Default macro, all macros between 16 and 999 will get deleted. The button on off should become a toggle button. Should mean that depending on which queue in the sequence is active, different macros are in the layout. Sounds complicated, but it's not. I choose macro 1052 as on-off toggle macro. So I save my on macro once to position 1053. Enter the appropriate command and color the macro blue so that I can easily identify that inside of the macro pool. After that, I directly generate the corresponding off macro. As I said, our macro in the layout view should become the macro 1052. I will write the command into the queues of the on-off sequence to copy the macro to that position. The O behind the slash just says override. 
Without that, Grandma always want to have a confirmation for each copying. And as desired, the appropriate macro is copied to the position by each queue. So now I can insert the macro into the layout view. In order to get always the right image, I have to specify the placeholder just like the macros, on which I always copy the image. I choose the position 1300 in the image pool, and my two images should be 1226 and 1230. The needed copy command I enter in the on-off macro as a second step. As a final touch, I would like to create status displays for the two colors, speed and rotation. For this, I fix directly in the image pool four placeholders and copy the graphics 1 to 4 on these positions, so that I find them later directly. Next, I'll put on four dummy macros, like I did for my logo. By the way, I would be very happy if you describe my channel, then you don't know miss any episode later. So that now the selected values from the sequences are displayed, the individual queues get commands which copying the correct images to the placeholders. For such things, it's so important that always label everything properly. I have taken notes which are my respective images and where they can be found in the image pool. I will start with the sequences for color 1 and 2. For that, I also get displayed when the second color mode is off. I will bring the designated macro the copy command for a black image. For speed and rotation, of course, I do that also directly.
So everything works now. I'm now making the video pad a little bit prettier by removing the names of the macros. Simply select all in setup mode, right click and switch off ID, name and type. Only the one for color 2 off I have to label because I have not created a symbol for it. Deactivate setup mode. Now set the EDL size and click on the yellow ball in the menu bar. Select grid, 0, 0 and choose a black gown color. Behind tools I turn off the zoom bar. And for the title buttons I disable all that I don't need. So I save the view on a view button. If you have your pad ready, please send me a picture of it by email. I would be very happy if you show me your result. Better still you load it directly on Instagram with the hashtag MAVideoPad and link me please at feeds.de. The next time I show you how I rebuilt the pad so I can send different videos on three different layouts. My name is Feeds. Thank you for watching and do not forget to subscribe my video channel and write something in the comments below.